it's time to sit back and relax with your favorite drink and listen. I banged a werewolf, part two. Try and stay on the road this time, Michelle called back as she rode away in her carriage later that evening. Yeah, yeah, I know, I answered, waving goodbye. I'd only been in my room for a few minutes before I heard a knock at the door. It was Tegan standing there with a worried look still on her face. You must follow me to my home, she said, trying to pull me out of my room. Oh, hey, calm down for a second. What's the deal? I asked her. Please, just follow now, she insisted, pulling me again. After about half an hour of walking, she brought me to the edge of a field where she led me through a small gap in the tree line. The trail came to an unexpectedly large clearing filled with a mix of old-looking wagon houses and modern mobile homes. This way, she said as she dragged me along behind her. We finally walked up to one of the older wagon homes and went inside. I climbed up the steps and looked in to see another woman who looked a lot like Tegan and about the same age. Oh, uh, hey, are you Tegan's sister? I asked. This is my mother. I'm so What? I croaked. This is your who now? My mother, she repeated. I have something to tell you both. We speak English for you to understand, okay? She sheepishly added. And after that, she spent a few seconds just looking at the floor, her leg hopping around nervously before she finally said, uh, without looking up, Mama, I think I make him werewolf, she said, pointing in my direction. I sat there, my jaw half open, astounded at what she just said. Tegan, are you in... <sighs> Why the hell would you say something like that? I tried to say, until I noticed her eyes glance up. Not at me, but at the woman she'd introduced as her mother. She'd leaned forward in a chair, her hands on her knees, and she glared down at Tegan, who looked like she got caught with her hand in the cookie jar. I don't know. What is, what's going on here? I mean, why do you look like you're in trouble or something? I asked as I looked back and forth from one to the other. After a few seconds, the other woman decided to speak. Because I know what she would have done to make you a werewolf boy, she said in shockingly good English, never taking her eyes off Tegan as she spoke. Oh, right, the werewolf bit. Yeah, okay, I'm starting to get some crazy vibes here, so um, I'm just going to head out, okay? I said as I made my way back out of the wagon and towards the trail. But before I could get there, I heard the woman step out from the wagon herself. Get back here, boy. We need to talk, she shouted at me, which just made me skip into a slow jog. And then she whistled loudly across the clearing and shouted something in Romanian, causing several people to abandon their homes to pursue me. They started to close in around me, some speaking at me in words I couldn't understand. I panicked and broke into a full sprint for the opening in a desperate attempt to reach it before they could cut me off from the exit. I was getting closer, and just as I neared the trail I heard two more sharp whistles crack out from the wagon and then, rustling in the bushes just up ahead of me as a massive creature rose up out of the darkness into the faint glow cast by the houses behind me. I slid to a stop on the grass, falling on my back as the towering beast leaned down over me. It extended a viciously clawed hand out towards me as I scrambled to get back to my feet and run in the opposite direction. Real? That was real? I wheezed to myself as I tried to catch my breath mid-sprint. Oh fuck, I'm gonna die. Fuck, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Fuck. I screamed as I was swiftly snatched upside down by one of my legs. I covered my face and squinted my eyes as I got ready to, well, be eaten alive, I guess. And then I noticed I was bouncing. I opened my eyes to see that I was being carried upside down back to the wagon, which I was then roughly placed in front of. After my initial oof caused by me bouncing off the ground, I looked up to see the woman stare at me for a moment before walking inside, signaling for me to follow. As I walked back inside, I turned to get one more look at what was definitely a werewolf, it was still looking dead at me as it hopped up and down and twisted its neck back and forth. The goddamn thing was limbering up, 
daring me to try and run again. So, um, werewolf, you say? I asked, walking in and finding a seat. Yes, a werewolf, the woman replied. So, why would you say that? I mean, Tegan never bit me, I told her. Why is she like that? She looks like she's in trouble. Tegan is embarrassed, the woman answered. Embarrassed? Why? After taking a few more seconds to stare Tegan down again, she answered. Because there are only two ways to become a werewolf. You are either born one, or you are turned by being with a female werewolf during her first time. Her first... What? Oh... I squeaked. I finally worked up the courage to turn and look at Tegan, who was now a shade of red I didn't think a person could even turn. So you're saying that if I'm a... You know, that means you'd know me and her... Yeah. She answered with a trembling voice through tightly pursed lips. But how would we even know that? I shouldn't have asked. Let me see your hand, the woman instructed. You're checking for the mark of the beast or something? I asked her. Eh, something like that, she said before taking my wrist in one hand and my forearm in the other. Snap. The sound of my arm being broken in half cracked through the small room, but in the middle of my screams and thrashing I stopped as I noticed a sensation. I looked down to see my arm slowly start to straighten and work its way back together, as the intense pain began to finally dull and then disappear altogether. Holy shit, I whispered to myself. Tegan, did you see that? She just responded by placing her head in her hands in shame, as I felt her mother's gaze start to burn a hole in the back of my skull. Oh crap, I mumbled, realizing what that meant. I was the guy trapped in a room with a werewolf who'd just taken her daughter's virginity the night before. And now I expected to die, if I'm being honest. Your name? She demanded, resting her chin on the tips of her fingers. Uh, Milo. My name's Milo, and I just want to say I'm so... Be quiet. Okay, I whimpered. We have much to discuss, and you will sit quietly as I speak. Yes, ma'am. I said, when she paused to make sure I understood. First, you will tell no one of this. Yeah, I know, clearly, that one's already out of the window. Second, since now you are one of us, you will learn the true origin of the werewolf. I shifted a little when she said that. As a horror-obsessed nerd, I was actually giddy about learning where they really came from. We are the Romani people. Do you know where we come from originally? She asked, and I shook my head. We came from India long, long ago. This is the home of the Yaksha, ancient guardian spirits who made the first werewolves by mingling with humans. This means most werewolves have a strong desire to protect others. Most? I asked. What, um, what about the ones who don't feel uh, overly protective? Follow me, she said, standing up and walking outside. Really? After all the trouble of getting me in here, I mumbled. Once we were outside, I followed Tegan and her mum through the back of the caravan until we found ourselves coming out at the other end near the woods. Waiting for us was a set of statues. Creepy-looking statues of werewolves. Werewolves being held down by chains, and in the middle was a staircase leading down into the earth. Oh, please don't tell me we're going down the scary stairs, I whined. They didn't answer. They just walked down the scary stairs and into the dark. And that's when I heard something breathing heavily behind me. I turned to see the werewolf that had run me down earlier standing there with his arms crossed. You're not going to let me go the other way, are you? I asked him, to which he shook his head. So I walked down the horror movie steps to catch up with Tegan and her disturbingly young-looking mother. I met them near the bottom where I could start to see light. Is there something wrong? Tegan asked me when I got there. Oh, um, no, I was just expecting torches or something. The um, LED Christmas lights kind of threw me off for a second, I answered, looking around at the strings of lights on either side of the ancient-looking stone hallway I was now standing in. Torches are expensive to keep burning. This is not Disneyland, 
Tegan's mum said as she started walking further into the underground structure. Yeah, I um, don't think anyone's expecting to find Mickey Mouse down here, I mumbled, following her deeper into the narrower and narrower tunnel. So, um, what exactly is down here? But my question was answered after we walked down another staircase, barely wide enough for me to fit through, that opened into a huge chamber. Okay, now, seriously, what's in here? I asked again as I looked around the dark room. Then I heard Tegan shifting something around before I heard the flip of a light switch. Oh, my God. I whimpered as I stared up at what they'd illuminated. Only one werewolf has ever denied his calling. You are standing in his prison, Tegan's mother said while I shook in terror, staring up at a grey werewolf covered in cobwebs. Unlike the one outside, this one had to be ten, maybe eleven feet tall, if not more, and was held in place by chains as wide as my entire body. Then it opened its eyes. I don't want to be in here anymore. I cried as its eyes met mine and I looked into the bright, malevolent yellow glow. As I stood there shaking, it took a long, deep breath that seemed to pull all the warmth and hope and life out of the chamber. Then, in a sudden motion, it lunged towards me, snatching against the chains, causing the ground itself to tremble underneath my feet so hard that I almost lost my balance as I threw my hands up to shield my face. Once I caught myself, I looked back up and saw something was different. It wasn't grey anymore, or maybe it never was. It was covered in so much dust, it looked like it was, but as the cloud settled, I could see the impossibly black fur that covered its entire body. Once the rumbling from the tremors had died down, I could hear a chorus of howls echo down into the chamber from outside. This place was built around him centuries ago. Tegan's mother finally spoke again. In this form, he is almost impossible to destroy so this prison is made so that to escape he must change back into his human form. And if he does, we wait on the surface to rip him apart and take the pieces to the far corners of the earth. Well, can he just change once he gets out? I asked. It is not that simple, Tegan answered first, then followed by her mom. You see, changing is a process that takes time and is also very painful. We can only become as large as the amount of food we have to eat. Many of us never change into a wolf for this reason. Others only rarely change, but some change and stay this way forever. The one who captured you has been that way since this prison was built, and there are several others like him who live in and around our village, she explained. So, um, does all this, I mean, I guess this has something to do with why this entire town doesn't show up on the maps, right? I asked having just remembered that. It is. There are those who would wish to free him and turn him loose on the world again, and so we made a deal with a powerful entity in this country, that if they hide this place, make it so that only those who know where it is can find it, we would both guard this prison and send some of us across the world to maintain balance of the supernatural, she kept explaining. Are werewolves really that strong? to which she answered by turning to look at the almost eleven-foot-tall monster held down to its very own prison by tree-sized chains who was still glaring down at us. Oh, yeah, that's fair, I mumbled. So, um, we get out of here now. He keeps staring at me and it's freaking me out. In a moment, Tegan's mum said as she strolled casually around me. You are part of this world now, and you are a part of our village, whether you like it or not, she added glancing over at Tegan, who turned away in embarrassment again. So, what do you guys call him? I asked, pointing over my shoulder. We call him Marele Luperau, Tegan's mother answered. And what, um, what does that mean? Does that mean something? It means the great evil wolf, Tegan told me. Ah, uh, okay, um, did, um, did you just call him the big bad wolf? After a few seconds of awkward silence, I spoke again. Well, I guess it's kind of cool if I think about it. I got to Romania, got turned into a werewolf the same night I lose my... Oh, sorry. I mumbled once I noticed her cut her eyes at me. So, where is Papa Werewolf? I asked, 
realizing I hadn't heard much about her dad yet. He is, uh, he does not know me, Tegan answered sadly. Yes, unfortunately he left after I told him I was pregnant, leaving only his necklace. And he was not a werewolf like us. Male werewolves are infertile. Only a werewolf female and a human male can make a werewolf child, all of which are born female, Tegan's mom explained. And even this is uncommon. Most of the time they do not become werewolves, are born human. This is why we are so rare. Hmm, I'm starting to get it now. But do you know why, like, biologically? I asked. No, there are not many scientific studies done on werewolves, she said sarcastically. But this is not what you need to be concerned with now, she added, finally walking towards the exit. Once we reached the top of the stairs, they both led me into the centre of the small village before Tegan's mother shouted something in Romanian. She said, Everyone, come meet your new brother, Tegan explained to me when I asked her. After that, the doors to the trailers and carriages started to open up, spilling their light out into the darkness. When I began to hear rustling in the woods from all directions, followed by five new werewolves leaving the tree line and walking up with the rest of the village. You will return here tomorrow. There will be a festival in your honour. Tegan spoke into my ear as everyone came to greet me. My mother is angry at first, but I think also she likes you, and it is tradition to hold festival when new werewolf is made, since it is being so uncommon. Well, that's, um, nice. Ready to go? A voice asked from beside me as I walked outside the next morning. Wh what? I asked. Confused as I turned to see Michelle standing beside me. Are you ready to go? I'm supposed to take you back to the bus that takes you to the airport today, remember? Oh, um, yeah, um, about that. I think I might be staying a little longer, I answered, scratching my head and looking up in the direction of Tegan's pub in the caravan. Hmm, found a reason to stay here, huh? she said with a smirk. Well, yeah, um, kinda. Even if it's not completely voluntary, I spoke up at her. But I guess you're off the hook now. I've started to figure things out around here. Thanks for all your help, though. Before she got up on the carriage, she leaned over and hugged me for a second. As she climbed up to her seat, she looked down and said, I think you've helped me, too. What's that supposed to mean? I called after her as she pulled away. But she never answered, so I decided to wander around until it was time for the festival in my honour, which was something I never expected to hear in my entire life, especially under the circumstances. Am I supposed to go there, or is Tegan going to come get me? What the hell time is it anyway? I mumbled to myself, grumpy over not being given more details. Ready to go? Oh, Christ, woman. I shouted at Tegan, who snuck up behind me while I was lost in thought. You can't do that. You can't sneak up on me and scare me like that the day after I find out werewolves are real and that, well, apparently I'm one too now. Why are you being so nervous? Almost not anything can kill you now, see? She said as she whipped out a small pocket knife and stabbed me in the liver. Oh, what the hell? I shouted before. Ah! An old woman who happened to see shrieked in horror. Oh, no, lady, it's fine. Everything's... I tried to explain, waving my bloody hands around at her, but she fainted. Oh, great. We just killed an old lady. Just great. I scolded Tegan. She'll be fine. I put her on bench, see, she said, hoisting the woman onto a public bench and propping her up in place. Where we go now? You goddamn sociopath. I groaned as she took my hand and tried to pull me along. First... I have to go get an unstabbed shirt. After I'd wiped the blood off and got a new shirt, I went back down to meet Tegan. She took the time of the walk to explain more about what was going on than the night before. She told me that whether a new werewolf is born or made, it's treated the same way and is celebrated. She also told me some basic things about them, like the differences between male and female werewolves. The males are larger and stronger when they change, she explained but the females are more vicious when they change. Claws look a little different too. You can also use the claw of a werewolf to keep other creatures away sometimes. Is that why you're really strong when you're normal-sized? 
I asked. No, nobody seems to know why this is about me, she answered as she scratched her head. So, um, I can, like, heal really fast too, I asked, thinking back to getting my shoulder checked by a work truck the day before and her shanking me in the stomach. Yes, you can even regrow lost arms and legs. Whoa, so, um, I'm like Deadpool, aren't I? I said excitedly. I do not know what this means, Deadpool. So I pulled out my phone and brought up a few pictures of Deadpool comic panels to show her. Ah yes, I see a resemblance now, she said after looking at them for a few seconds. What about silver? Does that really do anything? Like, does it burn or something? No, that is just myth. This is silver, you see, she said, raising her chest up so I could see the necklace she was wearing. Hey, that kind of looks like that thing from Dr. Manhattan's head, I thought to myself as I looked at the strange circular pattern. This was gift from my father. He left it with me, she said cheerfully, but I do not know where silver myth really comes from. As we walked, I could almost feel my jaw hanging open as I learned all kinds of things I never even thought about. And before I knew it, we were already walking through the trail that led to the tiny village, that admittedly didn't look nearly as creepy in the daylight. But well, the four or five massive monsters gathered in the centre who turned to face me as I arrived made up for it. Oh, hell. I mumbled as soon as I saw them look at me. Oh, they're coming over. They're headed this way. What do I do? I croaked at Tegan as they all began to stride in our direction. Clam yourself. It will be okay. I think you mean Carmen. I almost certainly will not. I answered nervously, my knees trembling a little. Once I got closer, I was able to recognize the one from the night before by a patch of white fur on his chest. Yep, still just straight up freeballing it, I thought to myself, as the difference in our height became obvious. They like you, I think, Tegan said as they stood in front of me. Not too much, I hope, otherwise I might lose an eye. What this means? she asked. Oh, nothing. So, um, what's the deal with this festival thingy? I asked, taking a few steps back and looking around at the other people hustling around, darting in and out of houses and doing various things. Heads up, Papo. I heard someone call from behind as a table almost smacked me in the back of the head. I managed to duck just in time to keep from getting cold cocks, and I spun around to see this lumbering gypsy Hercules carrying several tables on his shoulders. Hey, what, 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 hang on, why is his English so good? I asked, turning to look back at Tegan, pointing over my shoulder at the guy. He has lived in America for some years. He returns just before you arrive here, she told me. Yeah, I'll buy that, I said to myself as I began to wander around the caravan relatively unsupervised. I used most of my time to snoop and poke. Turns out my status as the guest of honour didn't keep me from getting on people's nerves. After getting shooed away from a food-covered table, I found a seat and plopped down. Such a festival for the boy who defiled my daughter. A familiar voice spoke from behind me. I turned to see Tegan's mother standing over me with her hands on her hips. She glared down at me for a few seconds, her body silhouetted against the sun shining behind her. Then she grabbed another chair and sat down beside me. Well, in my defense, Tegan did plenty of defiling her... S <laughs> Sorry. You seem to be taking all this very well, she said, not bothering to look in my direction. Well, I've always kind of liked monsters and magic and stuff, so it's pretty cool to find out that it's real, even if it was in the most embarrassing way possible, I answered, staring down at the grass between my feet. She paused for a second before taking a deep breath and letting it out in a long sigh. It was bound to happen sooner or later, I suppose, she said, leaning back in her seat. Do you know what Tegan's name means? She asked, but before I answered, she kept speaking. It is Romanian for beautiful woman. I never had any doubt that she would grow up to be uh, an olive-skinned goddess with long, curly hair and the voice of an angel. I finished for her. I was going to say very pretty, but that is very nice of you. Her father was a very handsome man from England who was here on business. What kind of business? Didn't you say you can't just randomly find this place? I asked. Hmm, 
I had not thought of that. He was a scientist of some kind, I think. Always making dirty jokes, too, but he was so charming and different and smart when he wanted to be, she told me, seemingly thinking back to fond memories. You miss him? I questioned, bringing her back to the moment. Hmm, I guess so. He had his moments. You remind me of him. Perhaps that's why I decided not to lock you away, too. <laughs> You're not joking, are you? I tried to ask, but I was stopped by feeling something on my neck. I turned and looked over my shoulder to see one of the gigantic werewolves a few inches from my face. Oh, shit! I yelled, almost falling out of my seat. You freaking asshole! After it saw my soul leave my body, it started to wheeze like it was laughing. Everyone's a comedian around here, I mumbled to myself. How's that work, anyway? I asked Tegan's mum, pointing over my shoulder at the chuckling monster. I know you said I'm one, but I don't feel any different. Is, is it like a button I press somewhere or something? We will teach you that in time. Today is to introduce you to everyone, she answered. I'm going to go find Tegan in case she needs help getting ready for the ceremony. What? Get ready for what? I asked when she cut herself off. Oh, nothing. Now, where is that girl? Ah, you boy. You here now with me. The man shouted at me as he ran towards me. What the hell are you doing? I asked him as he pulled me out of my seat and led me off towards one of the trailers. We get you dressed. It is tradition wear, the balding man tried to explain as he dragged me along. He led me into a trailer that was full of traditional-looking gypsy clothes and started digging around, occasionally pulling something out and holding it up against me. Are there any color you like more? he asked. Well, I kind of like red. I answered. Red, yes, I have much red, he exclaimed, diving back into the pile of clothes. What about this? Yeah, it's nice, I guess, I answered, as he held up the old-looking clothing. Good, good, uh, take this off, put this on, he demanded as he poured around and handed me things. This will be a most beautiful wedding. What? Festival, I say festival. I crashed through the trailer door, tripping over a loose pant leg and tumbling down the steps onto the grass. Where is she? I screamed, trying to finish pulling up my pants with only one arm through my shirt. Who? Oh, one random woman asked. Who do you think? I yelled in her face. Oh, oh, she said to herself, before shouting something out loud in Romanian which caused everyone to immediately face me. I took off running as fast as I could, but now everyone in the village was trying to get in my way. Arms and legs spread wide open like they're trying to keep me from scoring a goal, causing me to dart back and forth to try and shake them off so I could find Tegan's lion-ass underhanded mom wherever she was. And I didn't get far before I felt a familiar sensation of being picked up into the air. The wolf sat me down and pushed me back into a folding chair. A few moments later, her mom walked up to where I was sat. A wedding? Are you kidding me? You said this was a festival, I screamed. Well, there is a festival involved, she answered slyly, with a grin creaking across her face. I never agreed to get married, I shouted back, trying to wiggle out from underneath the paw that was holding me down. Would you let go? Where am I going to go, really? I yelled up at the monster, which still didn't budge. I know you understand me, you fluffy prick. I'm not getting married. And so, there I was, at the altar, standing across from Tegan. I'm sorry, she whispered softly to me, lowering her head as she spoke. Well, I guess as far as shotgun weddings go, I could do a lot worse, I replied. Look, I'm just not that romantic, okay? Just leave me alone. And, well, true to her word, there was in fact a festival afterwards. There was singing and dancing and food. As we sat down to eat, Tegan told me funny stories about different people in the village. I didn't really eat that much, though. I guess having a surprise marriage can kill any appetite. Hey, um, are you okay? I asked her, when I noticed she was starting to look a little dizzy and sleepy. I am fine. What kind of question this is? She asked me back, right before her unconscious head fell face first into her plate. Oh, well, um, that can't be good, 
I said to myself as the guy next to me face-planted into his own plate. A few seconds later, one of the changed werewolves came staggering up to the table before falling into a heap next to us. Person after person was losing consciousness all around me as the world started to go fuzzy. What the hell? I mumbled as I slipped out of my chair onto the ground. Hmm, still not out yet? I heard a familiar voice speak from behind me. Michelle, what the what? I mean, what the f- uh, You know. All oh, right, evil monologue. Yeah, I've been trying to find this place forever, but whoever put that concealment on this place has some serious juju. Well, I tried to follow someone back, but that damn sense of smell, they always knew someone was there. But well, a tracking beacon she said as she showed a blinking dot on the screen of her phone. Yeah, that did the trick. Why am I... What? Uh, I tried to speak through my stupor. Old world sleeping potion, she answered, holding up a small vial, made from some of the local herbs. Can even put an unchanged werewolf down for the count. Had to use something with a little more stout for these guys, though, she continued pulling a syringe with a black needle out of the unconscious werewolf. Eh, I won't kill him. Hell, not much can, but it can't put him down for a while. Anyway, gotta go, she finished, prancing off towards the underground prison, some kind of clothing bundled up in her hand. And that was the last thing I saw before I passed out. I woke to being violently shaken by the collar of my shirt. What did you do? Tegan's mum yelled as she snatched my body back and forth. But at the time, all I could really do was drool. I gurgled, a stream of saliva running down the side of my face. I can't believe this. All the centuries, then you show up, and now he's out, she growled, tossing me to the ground as I started to notice a rotten stink wafting through the air. She started to walk back in the direction of the chamber, I made my best effort to inchworm my way along behind her, the feeling having still not returned to most of my body. As we got closer to the entrance, I could tell the smell was getting worse and worse. After she stared down into it for a moment, she kicked me over onto my back and stood over me. How much trouble can one person possibly be? She asked down at me. I am... who... Do I? I tried to say, causing her to narrow her eyes. Saw a person before, passing out. When she heard this, she reached down and stood me back up on my feet. Come with me, she told me before trouncing off. I yelled before falling forward straight onto my face. The carriage driver, I said after I was dragged into the wagon from the night before. That's all I know, I swear. Do you understand how serious this is? She asked me, leaning close to my face. Well, judging by the look on your face, bad. About the time I said that, the door opened and Tegan fell face first inside, landing on the floor with a heavy thud. Your wife needs help, her mom said, looking down at her with mild disappointment. So I wobbled over on shaky legs and helped her up. So, um, what happens now? I asked nervously. We are going to need all the help we can get, as fast as we can get it. He will be weak after changing so drastically so fast. It will take him time to recover. We need to find him before he can change back, she explained. You're saying we a lot, I mumbled, letting Tegan rest her head on my lap. Yes, boy, this is your responsibility too now, she answered, more than a little ominously. You will be helping correcting this. What's the word, um, debacle? the hell can I do? I shouted, jumping up from the couch. Dum! Oh, crap. Sorry, Tegan. God, that looked like it hurt. I apologized as I picked her up off the floor. I really don't know how you think I'm going to be any help here. I've been a whirlwind for, like, a day? Two days, Tegan murmured up from my lap. Two days? I've been a whirlwind for two days. Yes. You have much to learn in a short time, she told me.
So there we go, episode two of this mini-series within a long series is done and dusted and things are really hotting up. Do you think you can handle another part of this story tonight? Well, good. I'm glad you say that because it's going to be ready for you by the time you finish listening to this. That's right, part three is up on the channel right now, if you want to listen to it. Or maybe you want to listen to it later, so it's all good with me. Well, another good one. And this series is delivering every single time uh, lightning in a bottle, as far as I'm concerned. Some of the best uh, stories I've ever done within this series. And I know you're really enjoying them as much as I am. So, what are we waiting for? Enough of this nonsense. Get on to part three.